riddle me this. I am normally not seen, while without me you could not see. My use is far beyond your reach, while some of my abilities you eagerly beseech. I can cause you to commit a crime or help you formulate a rhyme. If thoughts can be turned into a riddle, then in the steps I am in the middle. What am I? <laughs> it's an amazing riddle. The answer to this, of course, is the brain. And more particularly, the central nervous system, which we, is what we're talking about today. The brain is indeed the unseen organ when it comes to exercise, it's the unseen organ when it comes to motivation, it's the unseen organ when it comes to fatigue and even pathologies. And because it's unseen, because we don't actually feel it when we exercise, we turn to ignore it. And today I'm going to cover it. It's a massive subject. I cannot truly do it justice without putting in together a two-hour presentation of some kind. But we do have a detailed guide on this, on DRB, full of references. It's got about 30 scientific references, 30 scientific papers that it pulls information from to give you, even at that depth, a tiny picture of how important the brain is when it comes to fitness, health and exercise. So let's start from the beginning. Two clarifications, first of all. We talk about the central nervous system, and we talk about the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is basically the bundle of nerves which stems from the brain and goes down the spine and takes messages, electrochemical messages throughout the body. The peripheral nervous system is everything else. So essentially the network of, um, of signals which come from the neurons which go from muscles to the spine which then travel up the brain that's a peripheral nervous system and the central nervous system is what i just told you which goes down the spine goes down the central part of our body traveling back along our spine and from there radiating throughout the body three elements on this the brain is affected by exercise the brain affects exercise and the brain itself uh, plays a pivotal role when it comes to pathologies we experience and health span um, we actually achieve how? I will explain briefly now. Essentially, everything which we do when it comes to exercise requires us to move our body through three-dimensional space in order to do this accurately, to lift a weight, to run a distance, to run on the spot, to kick a bug, to do any kind of martial arts combat-based fitness move. We have to model that in our head. So basically the brain has to represent, it's a representational model of reality to create that in our brain to create that in its, in, inside itself through its connection of networks, network neurons and different centers which basically um, report back information from the external world. And when it does that, when it synthesizes that picture, then it has sent a message back, which is a really complicated thing, right? A, really, a message back to control the body the way that we want it to be controlled. Because of that, every time we exercise, this is what happens. Our brain becomes healthier because obviously in the first instance it's infused by oxygen, it's infused by um, rich nutrients which are released in the bloodstream after just a minute of exercise. Secondly, it becomes a little bit smarter and there are studies on this because it is forced to make fresh connections and reinforce existing connections which allow the body to be controlled better in three-dimensional space through complex moves. So if you're considering, well, you know, am I going to just get fitter if I lift some weights on the spot? Yes, you will, you get stronger for sure. But if you do kicks and punches, or even dancing, or even just pirouetting, or even jumping up and down, or even just running, those are more spatially complex movements which require a greater degree of control by the brain, which means it is forced to create a greater complexity in order to control our body. So essentially we become smarter and by one or two IQ points after that kind of exercise and there are studies on that. The other thing we need to keep in mind is that the brain itself also tires out from exercise even though we don't feel it. Because it is engaged in this constant dialogue between the body and the brain, the brain sends commands, the body has to obey. Every time we lift a weight, for instance, that dialogue goes on and on and on. And at some point, we will experience either peripheral fatigue where the muscle itself can no longer 
for because of its own um, increase in metabolites, its own sort of um, bottlenecks in circulation. If we are working it really hard, we'll not be able to respond to the commands it receives, or more likely the central nervous system itself will no longer be able to activate it adequately because the central nervous system has also become exhausted. Because it is electrochemical in nature, essentially um, specific neurochemicals create a charged environment which then fires electrical impulses which then govern the neurons that form part of the central nervous system, it can become tired and exhausted and the signal can weaken. Central nervous system fatigue is not very well researched because it is very difficult to research it, but there is an increasing body of scientific evidence that shows that after strenuous exercise, the muscles can recover, but the central nervous system itself may need a little bit more time in order to reach the state it was before it was depleted. So bear that in mind if you do a really heavy session, a really heavy training session, and you feel exhausted, and you rest adequately so that your muscles recover, your central nervous system may not have recovered. So when you try it again, you don't quite get the same results, not because your muscles haven't um, adapted for it, but because your central nervous system itself needs time, a bit more time to recover. Because of this constant dialogue between the brain and the body, the brain itself, the unseen organ, is in a constant state of flux as long as we exercise the body, and even more so if we exercise it mindfully. What do I mean by that? Well, exercising the body mindfully means we pay attention to what we do. We are present in the moment. And then again, there are studies on this that show that if we do this, and this is where our RPG fitness workouts come in, if we do this, then we can get as, th as much as 30% more efficacy from the workout in terms of um, fitness and uh, capability and uh, ability to move our body and coordination and all those things which we want to get from a workout than if we didn't do that mindfully. So mindful exercise, even if we're lifting a, bar, a dumbbell or a, or a barbell, if we are paying attention to the movement, if we're visualizing it as well as acting it out, it gives us 30% more in terms of strength and capability in the final result than if we, were, if we were just doing it. I know it's magic, I know it's crazy, but when we see how much the central nervous system in, is involved in the body, it makes perfect sense. And now we begin to understand those studies which say, um, and, and I put up a little video once on this, that if you visualize something um, and you think yourself as being powerful as an explosive train coming off the tracks, then you do a quick sprint and you can increase your power by up to 3 or 8 or 13 percent, which is magical without any extra training. Well, what happens is that concentration of the signal that the central nervous system brings to the task, and that emanates from the brain. When the brain is involved in so many aspects of exercise, and it so um, magically almost appears to influence so many attributes of fitness, then it stands to reason that itself is um, affected by exercise in return. And that also appears to be the case. If we are exercising, doing combat workouts, doing running perhaps, doing complex um, physical moves like dancing, the brain goes into a process called neurogenesis, where it actually generates new neurons which form new neural networks because these are then required to control the body. And because neural networks and neurons don't have a single task, they're then um, recruited by other processes in the brain, which is where, again, the rise in IQ points comes up because we have extra capacity in our brain. So this is magical. We essentially rewire our brain by moving our bodies in a mindful, focused, attentive manner. The other thing which the brain does when it comes to exercise is that it takes back the aging clock. So essentially, you know, we age chronologically, and this is never going to change because the years accrue and the weeks accrue and the months, and you know, we just cannot turn that clock back. But biologically, we can by forcing our body 
to develop attributes which we had when we were younger. So we developed the strength, agility, flexibility, and mobility we had when we were 18 and 20 and 25, and we can maintain that when we're 35 and 45 and 55, and we feel almost as good as we did back then because we have the same capability. The same goes for the brain. Essentially, the brain um, goes back in time because it is forced to adapt, it experiences stresses like the body, and it, re it regenerates part of its neural network, which allows it to be younger. A younger brain is faster in its capacity to process information. It is better able to understand the external world. So we kind of feel sounder in our thinking. And it is obviously also good on reflexes and speed and strength, because the signals that it gives to the body are clearer and more focused and uh, not degraded by age. There are very recent studies which also show that perhaps exercise can help with aging or age-related diseases like Alzheimer's and dementia. The jury is really still out on that one, but the research results are really encouraging. And certainly, while nothing is definitive on this, and these are very serious diseases because essentially you lose your mind and you lose your identity, you lose yourself, and then you lose everything else that goes with it. But the results that we have are hugely encouraging. They show that if we have a lifestyle which helps us maintain our body health to a great degree, which helps us maintain our physical health span, it also helps us maintain our mental health span. Well, I hope this has helped you understand a little, a little bit better the role that the brain plays in the body. I hope that it has helped you understand how important it is in pretty much everything we do. I hope it will encourage you to check out the Derby Guide, a link to on YouTube, which goes in a lot more depth and detail on this. And certainly I hope it encourages you to feel that, you know, it doesn't matter what time seems to take away from us, we can always work to take some of it back, if not all of it, through mindful exercise, through smart workouts, through better, smarter lifestyle choices. I hope this helps. Let me know in your comments below if how you found this and any suggestions you may have, and also any ideas on how this reflects in your own life and your own experience. Take care, I'll see you all next time.